talk to you about um, laminitis in horses. And I have quite a few pictures on here that I probably won't have time to go through in detail, so if you have questions about this later, I can go over those. Um, so what is laminitis? The common name, or most people know it, as founder. Um, what it is is it's inflammation of the lamina, which is a structure in the horse's hoof. And that lamina kind of works as a Velcro. It's kind of put together. There's two layers like this. And it, um, it, what it does is it holds that bone in the foot <coughs> kind of in place where it's supposed to be. And then that can, the inflammation of the lamina can lead to separation of those two layers. And then you have bone displacement as a result of that. And here, um, so this picture is a view of the hoof from the bottom. So you can see around the um, outside is where those laminal layers are. And then this one is a view of the side. So you can see that little dot there. Um, that's what the lamina looks like on gross examination. Um, so who gets laminitis? Well, really any horse can get it. Um, there are factors that make your horse a little bit more susceptible. Um, Horses that are sick and have like systemic inflammation are, are septic. Um, obese horses due to a metabolic issue. Um, diets high in grain also due to metabolic problems. And then um, again with the pasture, when it comes green in the springtime, a lot of um, horses have an issue with that. And again, that's due to metabolic problems. And then ponies, and that is mostly because they have a tendency to be fat. Um, that picture may be a little bit of an exaggeration, but um, <laughs> they then have secondary metabolic issues. So um, some causes, like I said several times, the metabolic disease, they can get um, laminitis secondary to that. Um, systemic inflammation, sudden extreme change in diet, inflammation of the hoof specifically, um, excessive weight bearing would be if they're lame on one foot and they have to maybe put all their weight on the other um, fore or hind limb to keep the weight off that painful leg. And then um, ingestion of black walnut has a similar, um, a similar issue to metabolic problems if they eat it in the bedding or out of the pasture. So how do you know if your horse has laminitis? Um, a lameness, lameness is usually the presenting complaint that we see. Um, typically in the front limbs before the hind limbs, and that's because the front limbs carry 60% of the weight, hind limbs carry 40. I'm glad you told me that because my <laughs> mind said, I wonder if she's going to do that. And then um, typically bilaterally, so it's not very common to see it in just one foot um, unless it is an instance where they are ha they have that, um, that like weight bearing issue. Um, things that you also might see, people often complain that they're just kind of reluctant to move, they're a little bit slow. Um, if it, a severe case or your horse might be a little bit of a wimp, you might have some excessive recumbency so they lay down a lot. Um, if you feel their hooves and their hooves feel a little bit warm, um, they might have a bounding digital pulse and what that is is there are arteries in the um, leg that go down to the hoof and if you feel um, those stronger or they're a little more palpable than normal, that can be an indicator of some inflammation in the hoof and then in severe or chronic cases a lot of times you'll see um, a dished appearance in the hoof or sometimes some laminitic rings and that's just a, a problem that occurs after recurring acute episodes. So um, here in these pictures um, this horse you can see is kind of rocked back on those hind legs. That's just to get the weight off of those forelimbs because they're pretty sore and that um, diagram is kind of self-explanatory there. This horse does have laminitis and he's laying down because he's pretty painful. Um, you can see their excessive use of bedding there and that's just to kind of give him some cushion when he does stand because his, like, his feet are pretty um, sore. That being said, it is okay for your horse to lay down, but what you'd be looking for is they lay down and they don't want to get back up or if they are just laying down more than normal and most people know their horses pretty well. So if you see something that's out of the way, that's a good indicator. Um, this is that dished appearance I was talking about, and the striations in these hooves are um, where we see those laminitic rings. So some of the things that your vet might do if, you, or if they come out and they suspect laminitis, um, a big thing is that it is often a clinical diagnosis. So you're going to be looking at what kind of lameness they have. Do they have elevated heart rates, respiratory rates, digital pulses, heat in the hooves, um, that kind of thing if it's an acute case. What is their history? Did they get into grain, <coughs> on pasture, um, that kind of thing. Um, you can also do radiology of the foot. Um, that's not going to tell you if you have inflammation in just the lamina, which is the tissue there, but it will tell you if you have displacement of that um, 
third phalanx or the coffin bone. Um, and then another thing that they might do is nerve blocks, and that's not usually used as a diagnostic solely on its own, but used in addition to um, a good physical examination, things like that. But it can kind of help you. Um, if they're so painful that you can't pick up a foot, that can um, allow you to alleviate that pain so they can stand long enough for you to get a good, good examination of those front limbs. And then um, if you take away the pain from the front limbs, you can identify whether or not they have... Before you go on, um, how do they do a nerve block? You might tell somebody. Maybe so knows. generally what we use, and there, there are different kinds of um, drugs that you can use depending on where and what you're, you, what you're doing the nerve block for, but for this, typically we use lidocaine because it's fast acting, it goes away quickly. Um, and you'll use a needle, and again, it depends on the kind of block that you're doing, but um, most of the time for this, you use a needle, you have to know your anatomy of your nerves and your vessels pretty well. Um, <coughs> the way I do it, I stick, make sure you don't have any blood if you're doing lidocaine, because you can't, if you do get into the blood supply with lidocaine, you can get a toxicosis um, issue, and that is not fun. Um, but stick around the nerve um, subcutaneously a lot of times, make sure you don't have any blood back, and then um, I usually, I mean, depending, again, what kind of block you're doing and where you're doing it and that kind of thing, you'll inject a small amount of lidocaine in this case. Um, it might make a little bit of blood, a blood under the skin, it may not. Um, and then you wait just a, usually not very long, a few seconds before it takes effect. Are you talking about like minutes. one or two cc's? Um, yeah, it depends. We, it depends on the kind of block you're doing again. I usually, for these, we usually use maybe a mil or so, because yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty local. Um, you don't need a lot. General. Yeah, it's just like going to the dentist. They do a nerve block yeah. on your jaw, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. <laughs> but again, that's not something that you're going to do just by itself to to, to say, hey, this horse has lingonitis. Like um, these are a couple of radiographs that I've taken at work. These are some of our more severe cases. Um, this here on the left is maybe not quite as bad as that one on the right, but you can see. Um, this bone should be parallel to this marker, and it's not. So um, what happens there generally is that the, the laminar layers in the front of the hoof detach, and then um, there's a, a deep digital flexor tendon that's on the back side of that leg that puts tension on that bone. And when those <coughs> laminar layers detach, that uh, tendon kind of pulls on that bone a little bit, and then you get that um, rotation from front to back in the tip of the bone there, as you can see. And it's similar on the other one as well. It, they, it also has that front to back rotation, but um, that one, and um, the horse actually had some sinking. So that occurs when you have circumferential detachment of the laminal layers, and um, so detachment all the way around the hoof, and it, the bone actually starts to sink through the bottom of the foot, which is where a lot of your severe pain comes from. Well, I'd like you have like a reference point then. You use this and compare it to the coffin. Yeah. Um, so this is just some gross uh, views of what we just looked at in radiographs. Um, not patients that I've seen, I just got those off the internet. Treatment, a lot of times, 100% um, of the time, prevention is better than treatment in this case. Um, but a lot of times this is going to be a management and support kind of a deal. Um, some things you might use to reduce that inflammation in the tissue is um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like um, banamine or Prevacox in long-term cases, bute can be used, but um, you have a higher risk of getting um, toxicity with bute because it does accumulate in the tissues, so you have to take a day off about every week's worth of treatment or so. Ace Promazine is a tranquilizer, but it's used in this case for its ability, supposedly, to um, vasodilate, peripheral vasodilation, so you get an increased blood flow to the tissue down there. Um, digital hypothermia, which is basically just a fancy word for soaking them in ice water or um, putting their feet in ice boots. And ther therapeutic shoe shoeing, goodness. Um, soft rides can be used, low grain to no grain diets, um, limited exposure to pasture, grazing muzzles in those cases where you're trying to control weight or um, pasture, and then weight control goes along with that. And then in really severe, not very common cases, there is uh, surgical intervention. Which would be kind of hairy on those. Yeah, on that mostly that surgical intervention <coughs> is going to be that deep digital flexor uh, tenomony where they're going to cut that and that just <coughs> prevents 
what that does is just prevent that tension that's on the bone, so that kind of keeps it from rotating. But there's a lot of management with that too, and they don't often go back to the same um, abilities, athletic abilities anyway, that they had before. So not done a whole lot. Um, this is a, <laughs> this one I have taken at work. Um, we just use fluid bags, rig them up essentially with tie gauze and duct tape, fill them with <laughs> ice, change the ice every one to two hours as it melts. Um, as a prevention, ice boots are really effective. Like it decreases their chance of getting laminitis if they're in the hospital with some sort of of sur uh, you know surgery or illness or what have you. The ice boots often prevent laminitis by like a tenfold difference. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's used pretty commonly in hospital prevention. Therapeutic shoeing, they're going to use something other than metal. It's really important to get that metal shoe off in the first one to two weeks when they after um, occurrence of the. Laminitis, just because it puts a lot of pressure on that laminar tissue, and um, it alleviates a lot of pain when you do that. So they'll use other substances like um, plastic, uh, wood, and things like that to kind of keep keep their foot off the ground and try and alleviate some of that pressure from that tissue. Soft red boots. Um, we can talk about a little bit more about those later. Grazing muzzles um, for those chronic cases that have issues being on pasture. Some horses, especially ponies. Um, once they have laminitis or they've had it, especially if it's a, a decent um, case as far as severity goes, once they go out on pasture again, they just can't really handle that grass anymore. So um, if you don't have a place to dry a lot of them, grazing muzzles are a great way to manage that. Um, it, also, it usually cuts down their intake of grass by about 80%, mm -hmm. which is, is generally enough to, to take care of that. Um, Perfect questions? timing. That was very good, by the way. That was very good. Okay, questions?